Auguste Marie Joseph Jean Léon Jaurès, commonly referred as Jean Jaurès (French: S. the 3rd of September 1859 to the 31st of July 1914), was a French socialist leader. Initially a moderate Republican, he was later one of the first Social Democrats, becoming the leader, in 1902, of the French Socialist Party, which opposed Jules Guesté's Revolutionary Socialist Party of France. The two parties merged in 1905 in the French section of the Workers' International An antimilitarist, Jaurès was assassinated at the outbreak of World War I, and remains one of the main historical figures of the French left. Early career The son of an unsuccessful businessman and farmer, Jean Jaurès was born in Castors Tarn, into a modest French provincial hot bourgeois family. He was the first cousin once removed of the Admiral and Senator Benjamin Jaurès, who became Minister of the Navy and Colonies in 1889, and of the Admiral Charles Jaurès his younger brother, Louis, also became an admiral and a Republican Socialist deputy. A brilliant student, Jaurès was educated at the Lycée Saint-Barbe in Paris and admitted first at the École Normale Supérieure, in philosophy, in 1878, ahead of Henri Bergson. He obtained his aggregation of philosophy in 1881, ending up third, and then taught philosophy for two years at the Albi Lycée before lecturing at the University of Toulouse. He was elected Republican deputy for the Department of Tarn in 1885, sitting alongside the moderate opportunist Republicans, opposed both to Georges Clemenceau's radicals and to the Socialists. He then supported both Jules Ferry and Léon Gambetta. Historian <inaudible> 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 In 1889, after unsuccessfully contesting the Castor's seat, this time under the banner of socialism, he returned to his professional duties at Toulouse, where he took an active interest in municipal affairs and helped to found the medical faculty of the university. He also prepared two theses for his doctorate in philosophy, De primis socialismi germanici lineamentis apud Lutherum, Kant, Fichte et Hegel, on the first delineations of German socialism in the writings of Martin Luther, Immanuel Kant, Johann Gottlieb Fichte and Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, 1891, and De la Realité du Monde Sensible. Jaurès became a highly influential historian of the French Revolution. Research in the archives in the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris led him to the formulation of a theoretical Marxist interpretation of the events. His book Histoire Socialiste 1900 shaped interpretation from Albert Matthies 1874 1932, Albert Sobul 1914 1982, and Georges Lefebvre 1874 1959 that came to dominate teaching analysis in class conflict terms well into the 1980s. Jaurès emphasized the central role the middle class played in the aristocratic Brumaire, as well as the emergence of the working class. Sans culottes who espoused a political outlook and social philosophy that came to dominate revolutionary movements on the left. <inaudible> Rise to prominence Jean Jaurès was initially a moderate Republican, opposed to both Clemenceau's radicalism and socialism. He developed into a socialist during the late 1880s. In 1892 the miners of Carmo went on strike over the dismissal of their leader, Jean-Baptiste Calvignac. Jars's campaigning forced the government to intervene and require Calvignac's reinstatement. The following year, Jaurès was re-elected to the National Assembly as Socialist Deputy for Tarn, a seat he retained apart from the four years 1898-1902 until his death. Defeated in the election of 1898 he spent four years without a legislative seat. His eloquent speeches nonetheless made him a force to be reckoned with as an intellectual champion of socialism. He edited La Petite République, and was, along with Émile Zola, one of the most energetic defenders of Alfred Dreyfus during the Dreyfus affair that polarized the right and left, army officers, and an educated newspaper readership. He approved of Alexander Millerand, and the socialists' inclusion in the René Waldeck Rousseau cabinet, though this led to an irredeemable split with the more revolutionary section led by Jules Guesté forming the Independent Socialists' Party. <laughs> SFIO leadership In 1902 Jaurès was again returned as deputy for Albi. 
The independent socialists merged with Paul Bruce's possibilist reformist federation of the Socialist Workers of France and Jean Alamein's Revolutionary Socialist Workers' Party to form the French Socialist Party, of which Jaurès became the leader. They represented a social democratic stance, opposed to Jules Guesde's Revolutionary Socialist Party of France. During the Combes administration his influence secured the coherence of the radical socialist coalition known as the Bloc des Gauches, which enacted the 1905 French law on the separation of the churches and the state. In 1904, he founded the socialist paper La Humanité. According to Geoffrey Kurtz, Jaurès was «instrumental» in the reforms carried out by the administration, Emile Combes, «influencing the content of legislation and keeping the factions within the bloc united». Following the Amsterdam Congress of the Second International, the French socialist groups held a congress at Rouen in March 1905, which resulted in a new consolidation, with the merger of Jars's French Socialist Party and Guesde's Socialist Party of France. The new party, headed by Jaurès and Guesde, ceased to cooperate with the radical groups, and became known as the Parti Socialiste Unifié PSU, Unified Socialist Party, pledged to advance a collectivist program. All the socialist movements unified the same year in the French section of the Workers' International On 1 May 1905 Jaurès visited a newly formed wine-making cooperative in Marassin. He said the peasants had to unite instead of refusing to help each other. He told them to, in the vat of the Republic, prepare the wine of the social revolution. As the revolt of the Languedoc wine growers developed, on the 11th of June 1907, Jaurès filed a bill with Jules Guesde that proposed nationalization of the wine estates. After troops had shot wine growing demonstrators later that month, Parliament renewed its confidence in the government. Jars's La Humanité carried the headline: "The House acquits the mass killers of the Midi." In the general elections of 1906, Jaurès was again elected for the Tarn. His ability was now generally recognized, but the strength of the SFIO still had to reckon with radical Georges Clemenceau, who was able to appeal to his countrymen in a notable speech in the spring of 1906 to rally to a radical program which had no socialist ideas in view, although Clemenceau was sensitive to the conditions of the working class. Clemenceau's image as a strong and practical leader considerably diminished socialist populism. In addition to daily journalistic activity, Jaurès published Les Proves, Affaire Dreyfus 1900, Action Socialist 1899, Études Socialistes 1902, and, with other collaborators, Histoire Socialiste 1901, etc. In 1911 he travelled to Lisbon and Buenos Aires. He supported, albeit not without criticisms, the teaching of regional languages, such as Occitan, Basque and Breton, commonly known as Patois. Thus opposing, on this issue, traditional republican Jacobinism. Anti-militarism Jaurès was a committed antimilitarist who tried to use diplomatic means to prevent what became the First World War. In 1913, he opposed Émile Drian's three-year service law, which implemented a draft period, and tried to promote understanding between France and Germany. As conflict became imminent, he tried to organize general strikes in France and Germany in order to force the governments to back down and negotiate. This proved difficult, however, as many Frenchmen sought revenge revanche for their country's defeat in the Franco-Prussian War and the return of the lost Alsace-Lorraine territory. Then, in May 1914, with Jaurès intending to form an alliance with Joseph Caillot for the labor movement, the socialists won the general election. They planned to take office and press for a policy of European peace." Jaurès accused French President Raymond Poincaré of being more Russian than Russia, whereas Viviani complied. In July 1914, he attended the Socialist Congress in Brussels where he struck up a constructive solidarity with German Socialist Party leader Hugo Haas. On 20 that month, Jaurès voted against a parliamentary subsidy for Poincaré's visit to St. Petersburg, which he condemned as both dangerous and provocative. The Cayo Jaurès alliance were dedicated to defeating military objectives aimed toward precipitating war. France sent a secret mission, headed by Poincaré, to bring Russia to her side in a committed web of alliances, that equally obliged the United Kingdom. 
Always a pacifist, Jaurès rushed back to Paris to attempt an impossible reconciliation with the government. Russia, unable to accede to Germany's desire to cease mobilizing, Kriegsgefahrstand had activated its forces. The last holdout, Prime Minister René Viviani, told Sazonov that France would order mobilization when it was ready. Assassination On 31 July 1914, Jaurès was assassinated by a fanatic. At 9 p.m., he went to dine at the Café du Croissant, 146, Rue Montmartre. Forty minutes later, Raoul Villain, a 29-year-old French nationalist, walked up to the restaurant window and fired two shots into Jar's back. He died five minutes later, at 9.45 p.m. Jaurès had been due to attend an international conference on 9 August, in an attempt to dissuade the belligerent parties from going ahead with the war. Villain also intended to murder Madame Caillot with his two engraved pistols. Tried after World War I and acquitted, he was later killed by Spanish Republicans in 1936. Shock waves ran through the streets of Paris. One of the government's most charismatic and compelling orators had been assassinated. Even his opponent, Poincaré, sent his sympathies to his widow. Paris was on the brink of revolution, Jaurès had been partisan for a general strike, and had narrowly avoided sedition charges. One important consequence was that the cabinet postponed the arrest of socialist revolutionaries. Viviani reassured Britain of Belgian neutrality but, the gloves were off. Jar's murder brought matters one step closer to world war. It helped to destabilize the French government, whilst simultaneously breaking a link in the chain of international solidarity. Speaking at Jar's funeral a few days later, the CGT leader, Leon Jaouo, declared, All working men. We take the field with the determination to drive back the aggressor. As if in reverence to his memory, the socialists in the chamber agreed to suspend all sabotage activity in support of the Union Sacre. Poincaré commented that, In the memory of man, there had never been anything more beautiful in France. On 23 November 1924, his remains were transferred to the Pantheon. Political legacy Jaurès and Caillot believed, after the latter was cleared of the murder his wife had committed, that they could expose the president's secret deal with Russia. This would have led to a policy of détente with Germany, preventing war and the inevitable carnage from 1915. Russia had covertly subsidized Poincaré's election campaign. Poincaré had therefore abandoned socialism for another party and warfare. Even if Germany intentionally condemned Belgium to occupation, they had already accused Russia of starting the conflict. In the centenary year of his assassination, politicians from all sides of the political spectrum paid tribute to him and claimed he would have supported them. Francois Hollande declared that, Jaurès, the man of socialism, is today the man of all of France. Whilst in 2007 Nicolas Sarkozy declared that his party was Jar's successor. In popular culture Numerous streets and plazas in France are named for Jaurès, especially in the south of France, as well as in Vienna Austria, Plovdiv Bulgaria, Tel Aviv and Haifa Israel, Buenos Aires Argentina, and also in Germany. Jaurès appears as a character in many period French films and TV series, sometimes as the main subject and sometimes as a supporting character. Jacques Brel wrote a song, Jaurès, and recorded it for his last album Les Marquises. In it, he wonders why Jean Jaurès was killed, while lamenting on the life of the working class. This song was reinterpreted by the band Zebda in 2009 as a celebration of the 150th anniversary of Jars's birth. Les Corins, a song by Pierre Bachelet, contains a reference to Jean Jaurès. Why ave à la Mary le jour de la Kermesse, une photo de Jean Jaurès. Al Stewart's song, Trains, includes the lyrics, On the day they buried Jean Jaurès, World War I broke free. The long poem, The Mystery of the Charity of Charles Pagai, by Geoffrey Hill 1983, begins with and returns to the death of Jaurès. Metro stations have been named after Jaurès in Paris, Jaurès and Boulogne, Jean Jaurès, Toulouse, Jean Jaurès, and Lyon, Place Jean Jaurès. 
In the 1976 film Maitresse, Mistress, a character looking at a Parisian map laments, There are too many avenues named after Jean Jaurès. Transcribed as Zers, Jaurès is a Russian first name, used by people as Zers Alferov, Alferov has a brother named Marx, and Zers Medvedev, whose brother is Roy, from MN Roy. For Zers Medvedev, this has been disputed by Michael Lerner. See the letter by Michael Lerner in the New York Review of Books, 23 March 1972. Jaurès figures in Jules Romain's epic fictional work Les Hommes de Bonne Volonté. His assassination is depicted in Roger Martin Dugard's novel The Thibaut's. Since 1981, a video clip of François Mitterrand placing a rose in front of Jar's tomb at the moment the socialists returned to power in pomp and circumstance is often played on French television. In the play Hans I'm Schneckenlock, Hans in the Mosquito Pit, by René Chiquele, the character Cavrel represents Jaurès. Jaurès is the idol and moral compass of the lead character, the union leader Michel, in the French film, The Snows of Kilimanjaro 2011. Michel quotes Jaurès throughout the film to justify and reflect on his actions. See also List of peace activists Topic. References Topic. Sources Topic. Further reading Topic. External links De primis socialismi germanici lineamentis apud Lutherum, Kant, Fichte, Hegel in Latin Jean Jaurès, Socialist and Humanitarian by Margaret Peace New York, B. W. Hipsch, 1917 PDF, DJVU from Internet Archive In English Jars texts at Marxists Archives This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed., 1911. Jaurès, Jean Léon. Encyclopædia Britannica 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. Newspaper clippings about Jean Jaurès in the 20th-century press archives of the German National Library of Economics ZBW.